This is the Epiphone Pathfinder amplifier. The model of this amplifier is EA28RVT. This amplifier is made in Kalamazoo, Michigan. This amp is in wonderful cosmetic condition all around, but it arrived in an unworking condition. We're going to have to take a look at this amp and see what went wrong. In the spirit of full disclosure, I will tell you that I've removed all of these um, shields and covers from the vacuum tubes from the bottom, as well as uh, I have removed the screw from this electrolytic capacitor. I wanted to take a look at a value on here. So this was not found like this. That's my fault. Other than that, nothing has been touched in this amplifier. Those are the only two things that I have done. Okay, so now we can take a look. I just wanted to point that out beforehand. And should it seem strange to you why the first thing somebody would do when opening an amplifier is unscrewing the electrolytic capacitor, which obviously would appear to us to be the filter cap for the power supply, for the, uh, um, the filter cap for the DC. Um, yeah, this is, this is a quad cap. Only two are used. This doesn't look right. So clearly this has been bolted on uh, after the fact. And I want to see what the readings are so I could compare this against the schematic. Why, you know, obviously th this was not put in by factory. So what's going on here? So I'm looking at the schematic and I see it calls for 220 microfarad capacitors. And on that quad cap, we're connected to 210 microfarad capacitors. Right off the bat, I see that the capacitance for this uh, circuit is wrong. So I, I see that, you know, somebody's been in this amp and they've replaced stuff and they've replaced it with the wrong stuff. And so now everything that looks like it's been worked on this amp is, is, is going to be suspect. So I'm going to have to look out for stuff like this and see anything else that's been modified because this is, this is wrong and what else is wrong? So yeah, I can see we're going to have some problems in here. On the right hand side, I'm seeing all sorts of fabric covered wiring. Okay, you can see there at the at the pilot, at the transformers, at the, the rectifier, you could see the the fabric covered wire that we would expect to see of this vintage. Yes. Look at this right here. This is six EU seven, right? There is one piece. This is this is a smoking gun. There's one piece of a fabric wire that is cut off that is sitting on a post that goes nowhere, nowhere else. And every other place has just shitty wiring, um, shitty soldering and wiring. And I'm like, I think somebody went and rewired this cabinet on the side, like took out all of the old wiring and said, I'm going to, I'm going to, or, or had a problem with this cabinet, couldn't figure it out. And just said, I'm going to wire by wire, redo this entire cabinet to this board. And I think that's what they did. Look at, look at this one right here. Look at this. This is, this is, um, look at this right here. This is V4, 6 EU7. Look at this. Look at the connections to this tube. Every single one of these, not a single one was done professionally. There is no way, there's no way that this vacuum tube was, was, was wired at the factory. Every single one of these connections was done after the factory. So while I'm on a roll here, uh, this connection coming off the filter cap, apparently whoever was doing it ran out of wire and couldn't get more wire and couldn't make it all the way to this uh, uh, phenolic board here. So what they did, not this wire, this wire, right? So instead of making it all the way to the board, they soldered it directly to the resistor back here. Instead of having a wire come down to the board where it's supposed to be connected to in the first place. You see like this yellow one right here, it is literally soldered right to the resistor. I wonder how much heat that resistor saw right there. It's that wire got soldered right to it. So, oh, this is terrible. Who does this? But yeah, you're looking at it right here. I can't make this up. Another connection I'm, I'm trying to make heads or tails of is this one right here. It looks like the resistor is jammed in and there's a piece of black tape with the resistor somehow connected. I can feel the end of it sort of taped onto this black wire. And this black wire makes its way out to the 
the frequency pot up here. Uh, and, and, and electrically it may be correct, but I, I think, I think that could be improved upon. I don't know. Yeah. Didn't take long through my inspection before I found this. Boy, this resistor must have seen a lot of heat. That thing just snapped right in half. And look at the one next to it. It's already uh, uh, a dark black. Let me see if I could zoom in there for you. So uh, dark black. That one's ready to go too. It's seeing some some ex in excessive current, no doubt. This whole area is seeing a lot of heat here. Uh, something's definitely going wrong. Light socket. Uh, bent up to a bit here some a lot of heat in this area a lot of a lot of electrolytic capacitors here, too I wonder if these guys are 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 causing some issues Take a close look at them. I push this one out of the way just for uh, the purposes of being able to work here and noticed uh, that this 20 microfarad capacitor has stuff oozing out the side of it that can be a good sign. Let me see if I could if I could get the camera there for you to see. Yeah, have a look at that. Uh, most electrolytics uh, fail don't leave a, a visual indication, as most may know. Uh, you know, leaking is not uh, a visual thing, but an electrical thing. But this is leaking, and it's probably leaking. Let us bring out our Heath kit and see exactly what these bad boys are doing. There are a few who do not know the judge, jury, and executioner of capacitors on this workbench. This is the Heath Kit IT11 with the uh, new leads from Mr. Frank Perez. Letting this bad guy warm up. We're going to check out all the electrolytics on this unit in one shot and document them. I'm going to point out that I'm on the electrolytic setting for this, which is the, the lowest standard for this unit, right? And... I've got it cranked up to 150 volts. I'm on this uh, electrolytic. is rated for 450. And at 150, you can see that it's open. It's good. And on this filter cap, it has taken a really long time for it to start opening up. No, no doubt this electrolytic would benefit from uh, um, a slow uh, rebuilding of, of the material inside, you know, chemically. But it's getting to the point now, you know, I crank it up to like 200 and... It'll probably open up eventually at 200, but this is definitely no spring chicken, you know. Again, this is this is on the electrolytic setting, so it's already passing a, a, a reasonable amount of current. And you can see that the eye is, is slowly starting to open up. And it's opening up right now. And I my, my, my thing is, eventually, if I could get this to 450, I would say that this was okay. And I'm only testing these just to see the condition that they're in, because this is already the wrong capacitor. The ones of, of extreme interest are obviously these. Okay, I can see this one is, is starting to open up, and you can see the 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 eye will eventually open up. And as, as I ramp this up, you know, we're slowly um, running current through this, and it's building up its dielectric material. Um, the, the current is decreasing. The voltage is increasing because this is current limited, this unit. So, and the eye is going to open. That'll be fine. But, you know... It hasn't been run in a while, clearly. This is my main concern, but I just want to see, and you can see that now at this level. This is basically what I'm doing. So this is going to open up fully, and then I'm going to go, obviously, and just crank it up to the next one. Rinse, wash, repeat. And a microamp meter, so we can see this reformation in progress. Uh, it is displaying microamps currently. Uh, I've got it uh, way down in, in, in the lower voltages, but I'll turn it up to where the real work is going on. All the way up at, um, I don't want to go past the meter's capability. So here's 450, uh, which would be too much right now. So let me let me knock it down to 400. And you can see that it's um, at, it uh, looks like 2,000 microamps. And you can see that the current is dropping as the capacitor is reforming. And basically what you would do is sit there <laughs> and do nothing. And as the current drops, the voltage of this unit will increase and only contribute towards the reformation of the capacitor, right? So if you didn't want to wait and wonder when the eye was going to open, this would be a, another method, a more modern method of waiting to see the progress of, of this, if there was any progress at all. And because this eye is calibrated to this uh, um, uh, microammeter, you know, it's a good indication of when the eye would open up.
Eventually the value got so low I was able to get the setting all the way to 450, which was its max, and it brought the uh, microamps up to 3,000. And after a time, that has dropped now down to uh, 1,600 microamps, and, and that continues to drop. So it shows that if you absolutely had to reform your original electrolytic capacitors under instances, it would be possible uh, to do so if the capacitor wasn't damaged and the only reason it wasn't working was reformation. This is only really the case uh, if you were reforming them before you plugged it in and prayed. You know, so if you plugged it in and, and provided power and the whole thing smoked, you can't stop and go, oh, I better reform the caps. It's already done. But if the, the unit had been sitting there for years and, and you weren't sure and you were doing what, what I was doing, uh, some people uh, use a method where they try and bring it up slowly on a variac. I'm really not sold on this. I will explain. Um, when you bring it up slowly on a variac, and you say, okay, I'm only going to provide uh, like 50 volts AC, right? There's not enough filament voltage to get the rectifier to work, right? And the rectifier, in turn, is not even really pushing out any, any DC. And and that's not providing any DC to the, the electrolyte. It's not doing anything. So... I guess, I guess if you got it up to like 90 volts, maybe you would be starting to get something out of the rectifier. You're not accomplishing anything because you, you really need a high voltage at extremely low current in order to accomplish this task. I'm not, I'm not feeling the whole variac thing because, because it's, it's, it's more art than science. It, you, you don't really know what you're doing. You're like, I, I, well, I'm going to turn it up. To, to 10 volts AC for five hours and then 20 volts AC and then do that for like three days and hope that somehow I reform the capacitors without damaging them. I don't see, I don't see where there's any actual scientific value there that tells you that your capacitors are reformed. Um, other than, unless of course you were doing it with a variac and you had, uh, some sort of micro ammeter, uh, or, or, or voltmeter at least uh on the capacitor to see how much voltage it was getting you say oh yeah i'm only getting like like four volts you know dc passing across there it's a minimal amount of voltage let it sit there and cook for like 18 hours then i guess i would say yeah okay yeah okay i see that a very very low voltage you know but but it wouldn't it wouldn't actually stress it right because it would be a voltage that is is well below you know what what the tolerance is and yet maybe that dc is enough to cause that oxidation that builds that that film on the electrolytic so you know even as i've been rambling on here uh the it's dropped from 16 to 15 so th this procedure is working you know again it's the wrong caps i really don't care what i care about is these three right here so we're going to move on to that since we did go through all the trouble though, let's take a minute to, to look at what that cap would look like on this machine now, uh, reformed to at least 400. I know I didn't spend time reforming it to the to the max rated voltage, but if Haya had not uh, known about this capacitor and I'm testing it blindly, right? So so it's completely discharged, right? And I'm, and I'm going to do a leak down test from three volts. Let's just run it up to just 400 instead of the max, right? So right now we're just seeing very little and it's 50. 100 and I would assume this this is still looking good for electrolytic, you know, and it takes a, a bit to, to charge It's a big cap, right? 200 and 250 and I'd still say that was looking good. You know, I'd say wow, there's like a there's a good cap, right? 350 Still good and and even 400 You know, I'd say oh, it's a little bit slow in opening up because because we all know that it's um that this is a completely reformed capacitor, and yet I'd go, you know, wow, it did actually open up. It did open up at 400. I'd say, wow, if this was a 400 uh, volt rated cap, I'd say, wow, it was actually good. And it's only at 450 where we see that that this thing is not, you know, it's not completely um, reformed. You can see that at 450, it climbed up significantly. To, to 1500 but that's just the point i wanted to make about rebuilding electrolytics which is something that i don't recommend if you don't need to but the point can be made that it can be done and and you just saw that this electrolytic was rebuilt right now
We're going to start with this uh, little 25 here. And, and dry electrolytics are not uh, wet electrolytics. Uh, what I said before does not apply to these and, and shouldn't be attempted. Sometimes these have the appearance of correcting themselves when you do this. And it's only because when they heat up on the inside, they, they release moisture. And the, uh, the outcome of these capacitors temporarily appears to improve, but they do not. Because as they dry out, all they do is suck the moisture back in and their ability to block DC drops significantly again over the course of a day or two. So uh, never attempt to do anything with these except rip them out and toss them in the garbage can. Unless, of course, your intent is to gut them and replace them with a modern capacitor on the inside. Some people like to do that. That's cool, you know, but, but never attempt to actually work with these. You know, these are bad. Okay, let's test this 25 out. It's starting at uh, 3 volts. Well, it doesn't look promising for 3 volts. It's 215. 450. 740. Yeah, not good. This 15 is already 1,000. And 25 is 1530. That's significant, significant amount of leakage for 25, right? 20 20 microfarad 25 at 15 it's already it's already leaking so let's bring that back let's let's discharge it and look at 15 again yeah 15 15 is already you know milliamp so yeah this this capacitor right here is no good this one right here is significant leakage We'll find out what it does. Right now, we're not going to worry about it. We're going to mark it as bad, move on to the next one. Now we're connecting to this uh, 10 microfarad rated to 450. I've reset everything for this event. Dial it up. This is uh, already uh, 400. Four hundred looks about good. And I'm going to say that it's probably going to be good at 450. Looking at the uh, the drop here, I'll give it like two minutes and come back to it. Like I said earlier, um, the current will drop in these uh, dry electrolytic DCs after you after you run some voltage through it or some current through it for, for a period of time. You know, as as the moisture dries up inside and its ability to uh, block DC increases slightly, but it's a temporary effect. Uh, these things should be replaced anyway. Uh, this is just for for demonstration. You can see it dropped ever so slightly. It still doesn't operate at its at its rated voltage and should be replaced. You know, but just to to see that that is the case it did drop from like 13 or 14 something down to 12 and it's not going to go any lower than 12 because once all the, the moisture that's in has been purged that's pretty much all it's going to do and 12 is still too high anyway and you can see the eye is closed so we're going to move on to that final blue capacitor right there let's test out the blue one see what it's got we'll set it for leakage count it down whoa Okay, blue has completely failed at 100, 100 volts. We could see that that it's it's dropping, but you know, as this thing was turned on, 100 volts is where it stopped. So we'll, we'll give it a second and see if it opens up, which it will. But at that point already, if this amplifier were turned on, you know, as soon as soon as uh. As soon as whatever circuit turned on started putting DC through it, that would have been that would have been a short. We're seeing uh, 1.6 milliamps and dropping. If yeah, this is no good though, you know at, the, at this point already I see something like this and I say this is a 450 volt rated capacitor and we just saw it 100 volts. This thing just just went and dropped dead. I'm gonna, I'm just going to say this cap would be unacceptable, and we're going to move on. Yeah, I almost forgot, even though this electrolytic uh, is being replaced up here, there are two segments to it. It's worth, obviously, checking that other segment on this. So I'm going to do that right quick. It's uh, rated to 450, and it's probably going to be roughly in the same condition 
of the other one. So sitting here at 100, 150, and open to 200, 250, 300, Three fifty, and you can see that it's good in and around 400, 450. So it's roughly the same condition as the other one. So here's the information that I've gathered so far. I've cut away the grounds from this uh, central location uh, for better viewing and inspection. First things first. This uh, 20 microfarad capacitor is part of the uh, cathode bias for the 6v6s. It is connected to this uh, 270 ohm uh, uh, resistor right here. This resistor is rated at 2 watts. The resistor has been inspected and found to be at 320 ohms, so well out of specification. Also, this uh, capacitor is said to receive, under normal operating conditions, 18 volts it has already been shown in the previous video that there is significant DC leakage at 18 volts. So the capacitor is broken, resistor's out of tolerance, everything in this extremely important cathode bias network is completely broken. The 6v6s cannot be biased, right? So this is garbage, has to go. Okay, uh, the next one is going to be this 30. This is very interesting, okay? This 30 is electrically connected to the tap on the um, on the coil here on T2. So right over here is where this 30 is coming in. So the purpose of this 30 was to compensate for the fact that this 10 was supposed to be a 20, okay? And because this 10 wasn't a 20, somebody lobbed in a 30 to make the uh, 10 or basically a 40, right? Where the 20 was supposed to be. So, so the 20s here is a 10, added the 30 and made it the capacitor of 40. So this should not even be in circuit. And in very much the same way, this 10 over here was added into circuit. The equivalent circuit is over here and you can see it's been added just on in between this network of resistors right here right over here where one of them is broken you can see over here and this 10 comes in right here off of this 20 right which is supposed to be one of these but it's a 10 to make that 20 which uh technically for electrical purposes would be correct but again this is another compensation because this is wrong this capacitor doesn't belong in this amplifier either this is supposed to be removed so by putting in the correct capacitor here this one would go this one would go right this one needs to be replaced because it's it has a very low dc leak down voltage this one is out of tolerance and subsequently this one blew out and this one's ready to blow out you know and that's what i found just on the investigation on on this side of the amplifier so far that 4.7 back there is now 7.47 as measured uh that thing's ready to go too as expected look it's already charring from the inside out you got to look really carefully because there there are three more electrolytics in this unit right there's one two three and don't let their size fool you they're only rated to six volts so they fit really nice in this phenolic board here and i'm i'm not gonna i'm not gonna remove them i'm gonna i'm gonna test them i'm gonna look at their esr you know for, for those who don't know esr you're gonna run it run an ac voltage through them at a given frequency and and see how much uh, uh, the amplitude drops in that voltage and compare that against the others to see the equivalent series resistance uh, you know of, of that capacitor the problem is if they all if they're all dropping the same I'm gonna see the same value I don't have any factory measurements to measure these by and I went and looked at the diagram and obviously because if, if this were used for the purpose of like audio grade stuff i'd be terrified and it's not it's, it's okay uh this is also cathode bias right here i could see one over here and i annotated again one over here and then there's a, a third one up here so another cathode bias uh, uh network but this is also something too I, I'll, I'm, I'm gonna take esr measurements first let's 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 at least look at that 
based on the, the values as compared to, to each other, the ESR values came out to all about the same. Uh, I didn't see any that was, you know, wildly off. If I did, I'd know it was bad. But because all three were the same, I'd say I, I didn't see anything crazy. I, I I can replace these if there's a problem. I'm going to be checking the, the, the bias voltages of, of these when this is up and running. But there's there's so much to do on this side. I'm willing to let this go right now and see if there's a problem later. If there isn't, then then okay. 